Good morning, everyone. What a great week we've had. You know, we looked at fundraising for our downtown campus. Now, that's a big deal because it's in our inner city. And in the inner, that campus is in the middle of the toughest area in our city. You know, on Baseline is where all the prostitution, a lot of it's happening from G and Baseline. There's prostitutes that actually, they ship them in from Las Vegas to work that street. And we have teams that work, actually talk to the prostitutes every single week. We do everything we can to take them off the streets. And sometimes they say yes, and they come into our homes, which is awesome. And I thank God that we have a home to do that. Also, in the downtown area, a lot of these kids are in a place where there's a lot of violence, a lot of criminal activity, a lot of addiction, shooting up needles. All that stuff is all around them, but it overflows into the parks too. And most of the parks in our city, especially in the inner city, are unusable for our kids anymore because they've been taken over by the homeless and, and it's not a safe place for them. So we decided as a church, you know, not necessarily can we fix the parks and we'll do what we can to witness and share our faith and talk to people there. Of course, we're going to reach out to them, but we need to create a safe place and we have some space at our downtown campus. So what we're going to do is convert that into the one safe playground in the city where they don't have to worry about just be kids. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. And we're going to make it as beautiful as we can. And I really believe our downtown campus should be an oasis in the desert. That it should, when you walk on that, just even walk through the, the, the borders of that, it should look like a little bit of heaven on earth. And we're going to provide the mentorship, the love, and a place where the kids can come and play. Thank you, guys. We did it. We did it. We're done. Now we're going to be able to... Get a few more estimates and get that started. Thank you guys so much. Next week, we have a team that's going to Kenya. And we, are, we actually, we, as a church, we sponsor, we have, we own an orphanage there. And we're rescuing little boys and little girls from the streets that are abandoned. And in places like Kenya, once the parents are gone, they die. Um, they don't have the hospitals that we have or... Uh, uh, the leader of that of the orphanage is Brian, and Brian grew up in that orphan orphanage, and now he's the pastor of that orphanage, which is amazing. And he got there. He got there because his mother was so impoverished that she didn't have enough food for all the kids. So what she did one day, she just put all the names in a hat, and she said, "The one I pull is going to the orphanage." And Brian's name was pulled. She dropped him off at the orphanage as a little boy. He grew up in the orphanage, but now he's there and he's running the orphanage. What a story, right? He's a great, great young man. And if it wasn't for the church, he would never be the man he is today. But it's even greater than that. Now, this year, because of all our giving, we built a school this year. For little ch for children, we have 150 students in there. We give them their uniforms. We take care of them. We put their sh shoes on. That we feed them every single day. These little boys, under 365 days a week, uh, a year, uh, 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 days a year, we're taking care of them. We built a school, and we have teachers there that uh, we pay. They're on our salary. We pay them, and now we're able. We did such a great job. The city came to us and said, can you please, you're doing such a great job. Can you please open up a junior high for, for we got a lot of kids that don't have a school to go to. So right now, we raised the finances to get the junior high started. And so we're, we have a team going to Kenya next week. And they're going over there to get, get started on that, that junior high. And it's going to be able to handle 300 kids that are on the streets. And we're going to bring them in and take care of them. A lot of great things are happening. Thank you guys so much. This is how we do it as a team. There's nothing greater than what we do because what we do is for eternity. We're not just helping kids and feeding them, but we're introducing them to Jesus Christ. And understand this. If you don't have Jesus in your life, not religion. Religion won't save you. But listen to what I'm saying. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one 
goes to the Father, goes to heaven. But through me, Jesus said. Jesus isn't a way, he's the way. And today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, hopefully you'll understand that, get a conviction about it, open your heart and receive the forgiveness, the eternal life, and the fullness of life that he offers you today. God is knocking at your heart's door, and I'm so glad that you're here. One more thing, we do have, we're, we, a lot of people are saying, we went through the 30-day devotional, we got so much out of it, I'm so sad that it's ending, but we're going to give you an opportunity here, you got a bookmark, we're going to, you can continue doing a day-by-day devotional, one, one through 30, which will get us to chapter 12, and then I'm going to give you another one after 30, it'll be 30 through, well no, it's going to be 60 through 90, but you have day one all the way to day 30, and on the back side, it shows you when you're studying the Bible, what to do, what questions to answer. Get a little journal, and you'll be able to keep going with your Bible study every single day. So you have that. Put it in your, in your, in your purse, in your Bible, and we'll go from there. Are you excited what God is doing? I'm so glad to see every one of you here. If, if you're here, if you're here for the first time, we want to welcome you and, and let you know that. I, I really believe this, that if you're here for the first time, it's not a coincidence. It's not an accident. You're here because God wants you here. I, I don't think at the beginning of the year you said on this day you'd be here. But you're here. And God is not here to judge you, condemn you, put you down. He's here to help you. He's here to give you the life you've been looking for. Today, Today's your day. Open your heart right there where you're at. And you can receive the eternal life and fullness of life that God wants to give you. Just... just just be ready today to focus, pay attention, and receive everything God has for you. Isn't it great? So this week, we have, we're have we starting the Holy Spirit month, and, and Prophet Rob's going to be here Wednesday, and then Pastor Robert be here the next Wednesday. Looking for, you, I know you guys are looking forward to seeing him. He's been gone for a couple months. And, um, and then we're going to end it with a worship night with Pastor Gabriel speaking as well. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to study your word. I thank you, Lord, that you'll empower us to understand your word, to receive your word, and also to apply to our lives. And those that need a supernatural, we all do, but those that need salvation, I thank you, Lord, that you'll make yourself real today. And they'll understand the offer that you're giving them. And they'll open their hearts and receive the eternal life that you want to give them through faith in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to be talking about the creative power of the Holy Spirit. Say with me, the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, is the first time that God's Spirit or the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible. So I figured the best way to introduce the Holy Spirit is just let the Bible introduce the Holy Spirit. By the time you're done with this sermon, I think you're going to have a greater understanding who God is, what his spirit can do, and I believe your faith will grow. This is, this is what I've learned in life. You'll receive at the level you believe. Say it with me. You'll receive at the level you believe. What that means is not everybody here is at the same level of belief. There's actually some of us in this room that are non-believers, like you don't believe. There's some of us that believe at a measure. And there's some of us that have grown to believe at a greater measure. And the level of the measure of your belief will determine the measure of the power of God, the miracles you see in your life, and the fulfillment that you have in your life. So we're here to get to know God better. And getting, know, getting to know God better, we have to know who the Holy Spirit is. It's the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that comes into your life. It's the spirit of Jesus. When you are saved, you don't receive a religion. You receive a person. And the person that you receive in your life is the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of God. It's the spirit of Jesus. I think if you start realizing who's in you, then I, I really believe this, you'll begin to have faith to overcome what's around you. Until you know how big God is and you know that he really is living in you so that he can live through you to overcome everything that you're facing. The scripture that says this, I can do all things through Christ. But there's another scripture that says this, 
Greater is he that's, in, he that's in me than he that is in the world. What he's saying is whatever you're facing in this world can be overwhelming and your addictions can be overwhelming. The depression can be overwhelming. Your failure, your, your relationships, everything you're going through can overwhelm you. But God is saying, I've given you power through my spirit to overcome all of it. And today's going to be the beginning of you experiencing the full life that God has for you as you begin to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. This is the first verse in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What an amazing statement. It kind of just gives us the answer to everything. God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, the earth was formless, empty, and dark. Darkness covered the deep the deep waters. It, it, it begins to describe the condition of the earth before creation. But look what it says. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In creation, the spirit of God is mentioned in verse two right away. And the reason he's mentioned, because it was through the power of the Holy Spirit is how everything was created. The power of God is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God in action. Say with me. The Holy Spirit is what? In action. Jesus was full without measure. The Bible says he received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, without measure when he walked on earth as a man. And this is what Jesus would do. He would say something like this. Be healed from leprosy. And then the people always would be healed. Now, Jesus would say it. But it was the Holy Spirit that would do it. When Lazarus was dead for four days in a grave, these are real stories. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He got, he got deathly sick. They buried him. Jesus showed up and everybody said, if you would have only came earlier, maybe you could have healed them and saved them. And then Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Do you believe? Because I'm the, anyone that believes in me, will never die. What he was saying is, as a believer, you just go into eternity. Those that believe in Jesus have eternal life. Our life on earth is limited. But he said this. He said this to Lazarus in the tomb. He said, first of all, he said, remove the stone. Remove the stone that covers the tomb. And Jesus said this. Lazarus, come forth. And this is what happened. Lazarus came jumping out. He was like a mum. He was mummified. He came jumping up. Out, and it said, loose him. But the one that resurrected Lazarus from the dead was the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke it, and the Holy Spirit did it. Now, that same Holy Spirit, it's very important for you to understand, is available to us today to help us with our everyday life, our failures, our sins. And he's not here to judge you, but he's here to help you. One of the names of the Holy Spirit is helper. So, so he was there, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God says, let there be light, and there was light. So what happened at the beginning? God created the heavens and the earth with the power of the Holy Spirit. The word created means that he created something out of nothing. Now, the only one that could create, I want you to build faith on this. The only one that could create something out of nothing is God. Man cannot create something out of nothing. Man could formulate something with something, but not create something out of nothing. I could take the greatest scientists in the world and tell them what I want you to do is just create just a, a dust particle. And they can't they say, well, we can't create a dust particle without some particles. They can't create a grain of sand without material, without some type of mass. But God's the only one that could take nothing and create everything with it. I want you to get that in your mind and in your spirit because you might feel like you have nothing in your hands. You might feel like your life is over. You might feel like some of the mistakes that you've made, you can't recover. But if God could create the whole universe out of nothing, he can take your little something, your failures, your mistakes, and create something beautiful with it through the power of his Holy Spirit. 
When you give your life to Jesus, the Bible says, old things have passed away. And the Bible says, anybody that's in Christ is a new creation. A new person. This is what God does. He doesn't change behavior. He transforms people, transforms hearts, and gives you new desires and gives you the power to live a new life. Isn't that good news that you could become a brand new person today? There's hope for all of us. The Holy Spirit is introduced here in Scripture. This is the first major point I want to make. He's introduced. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. It says the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is not a junior spirit. Let's make this clear. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of, he's not a force. He's a person. It's the Spirit of God. When you receive Jesus, you receive his Spirit, the Spirit of God. How can you be full of the Spirit of God and be the same person? It transforms you. It's just like this. You know you could be filled with the Spirit of God, but do you also know that you could be filled with spirits of demons? We're so fascinated watching movies like The Exorcist. And you say, well, you know why it freaks you out? Because you know it's real. Especially right now, as we're going into Halloween, there's a lot of wicked movies. Don't watch them. Just stay right here. Be tuned into the Holy Spirit. Because what you're tuned into, you get filled with. Come on, how many want to get filled with the Holy Spirit? But we freak out because you go, man, that, these are real, man. There's such thing as demons. And if you've been, been playing with sin long enough, you've experienced some demonic activity. There's some of us here that don't deny, like, man, that dream I had was just crazy. That high that I had just took me for a loop. The thing that I saw and the hate that I saw in their eyes was more than hate. I could just see there was something behind it. Or maybe there's a thought that you've been trying to overcome and it just torments you over and over and over. And maybe it's not just your thought. Maybe it's a demon that God wants to set you free from. But I got good news for you. If God could create something and everything out of nothing, he can set you free, recreate you, and make you brand new and make your brain work the way it's supposed to work. It's the spirit of God. Now, that word spirit of God is is a Hebrew word, ruah. Enemies, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son and and Jesus. It also means Shekinah glory. And it means Shekinah glory is that, what is that? It means the visible manifestation of God on earth or the breath of God. What that means is every time that there's an invasion of the supernatural into the natural, that's the Shekinah glory. What we're seeing is a manifestation of God's presence. And what it does, it causes supernatural results. Like this young man that just came up here. His brother is in the men's home. And I don't know his full story, but I guarantee you, everyone thought he could never change. There's no way that guy can change. He can't change definitely in a few months. It's impossible. He's been a career criminal. He's been uh, addicted. He's been violent. He's been destroying our city. But something happened that he has a sane mind. He's set free. He's coming to church on Sunday morning, getting baptized. Only the power of God can transform a life. Only the power of God can transform your marriage. Only the power of God can change your kids. Only the power of God can set you free from an addiction. Only the power of God can replace your depression with joy and peace. Only the power of God can give you a dream back. Come on, give you a vision back. Give you a reason to live back. Only the power of God can save you and give you eternal life. Let's give some praise to the power of God that he's given us available to overcome what we can overcome. This is real. This is as real as it gets. God created the heavens and the earth. It was not a theory of evolution or Big Bang. There's no such thing as a scientific impossibility of something coming out of nothing. That's a miracle, and only God can do that. God, I want you to get this, does everything 
through the power of his spirit, including creation. Everything that he does is through the power of his Holy Spirit. And what I love about the Holy Spirit, he's omnipresent. You can meet the Holy Spirit in a bar. I don't recommend go to a bar to meet the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying, if you did call on Jesus while you're half drunk and beat up by the guys that you went to the bar with, and you say, Jesus, help me, save me. I'm tired of living this life. Jesus will pick you off the ground, your bloody mess, and tell you, I'm just waiting for you to call on me to save you. I'll transform you, and I'll set you free from your alcoholism and your crazy friends. Look at Zechariah 4, 6 says this. You will not succeed, someone needs to hear this, by your own strength. Because you won't. Well, I feel I'm successful already, really. Are you really successful emotionally? Are you really successful relationally? Well, I got money. Money don't mean you're successful. There's a lot of people who got money and, and they're a royal crazy mess. How many understand that? Look at all the famous people. Most of them are like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They're, 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 they're crazy. Money, but crazy. Money, but hopeless. Money, but suicidal. Money, but depressed. Mon they have money, but they don't have success. Because success is not on how, mu how much money you got. Success is that you have peace in your life. Success is that you have freedom in your life. Success is that you're fulfilling your purpose. Success is that you're moving ahead and you're not stuck. Success is that you have eternal life. The Bible says, what is a prophet, a man or a woman to gain the whole world? And at the end, you lose your soul. Failure. Do you really think you're going to take anything with you? Well, but what about this degree? That's good. I'm so glad you got a degree, but you can't take it with you in heaven. It's just so show the angels and look right here. I'm a PhD. Don't I get it for, with that? No, you don't. Okay. Look, you will not succeed by your own strength. Whatever matters that you really want to succeed in, you will not do it without, with your own strength or by your own power. Stop trying to be self-made. I got this. I'm going to be self-made. I'll save me. I don't need nobody. I pull myself up by the straps. You, you could say all that until you get in a situation that you can't fix you. Until you get a diagnosis that the doctors can't fix you. Until you get heartbroken and you're trying to fix something you can't fix. Until you get bound by a, a habit and a bad addiction that you're trying to overcome and you can't. But, but if you would just depend not on your willpower, not on your self-discipline, but say, God, I can't do it. I'm a royal mess. Jesus, save me. And God says, I'll send my spirit and you, I'll help you succeed. Look what it says. But, someone say but. But by my spirit, says the Lord all-powerful. How does God describe himself? The Lord all what? I love that. I want you to get this. That whatever you're facing, the Lord all powerful is more powerful than what you're facing. Stop fighting with people and just start trusting in God. Could it be that you're more focused on the bad things that are happening in your life than your answer? Could it be that you're more focused on somebody that hurts you and has been abusing you, is not doing you right, and you're so focused on them that you look at them as your royal enemy, and you're not re realizing that God can help you with them too? You know what God is saying? Get your thoughts higher. I'm here. The Holy Spirit was there. Now, number two that we can learn about the scriptures, the Holy Spirit was there at the beginning when the earth was formless, empty, and dark. Look what the scripture says. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deeps of the earth, and the Spirit of God was hovering. Why is it important for you to realize that the Holy Spirit is there? Because it's really easy for you to recognize the emptiness, the formlessness, the darkness, and ignore that the answer is right in front of you. And unless you acknowledge that the Spirit of God is there in your mess, and he's there to help you, this is what's going to happen. You're going to stay in it. Because nothing changes until God's spirit gets involved. 
Now, formless, this is what it means. It was a Hebrew word, tohu. I don't want no tohu in my life. I like some tofu, but not no tohu. I'm just kidding. Look, for, it means in disorder. In disorder. It means chaos. It means a state of confusion, worthlessness, a wreck. Maybe these words begin to describe our condition before the Holy Spirit touches us. This was a condition of the earth, but could it be that that's the condition of every unrepented sinner eventually? Confused, a wreck, chaos, everything's out of order, and we don't know how to put it back together. The other word is empty, and that word empty means bohu. Tohu and bohu. Some of us have tohu and bohu. And you need Jesus. All right, let's look at it. It means nothingness. It means devoid of life. It means a space entirely devoid of matter. It means ruin, a wasteland, disrep- in a state of disrepair, failure, and defeated. Maybe you're, you have some, you're experiencing bohu in your life. I feel like I've failed. I feel like I'm wasting my life. I feel my life is devoid of meaning and purpose. I'm struggling. That's the same exact state that the Holy Spirit met this earth in. And it was dark. Hoshek. That's what that means in Hebrew. Hoshek. It means not defined. It means without purpose, undistinguishable, obscurity, destruction, death, or dead sorrow. Maybe that's the situation you're in. Deep depression. It feels like everything is dying. You're in deep sorrow. There's no purpose. Your life is unrecognizable. You know what it reminds me of? The storm that just hit. Hurricane Ivan just went through Florida. 155 mile per hour winds. Some of the islands that were there were completely covered with water. 90-something percent of the whole state was without electricity for, for a while. But one of the islands is so bad, they're like thinking, man, we need to bulldoze the whole island to start over. Right now, if you looked at the debris, you would never recognize what was there. It's unrecognizable. And this is what sin will do. You, used to, you started out with a dream. As a little boy, a little girl. But as you began to go through life, it was like Hurricane Ivan came through and destroyed everything. You no longer are dreaming the way you used to dream. Your life did not turn out the way you thought it would turn out. Your life is unrecognizable. And what God is saying, I specialize in empty, formless, dark places and dark people. Get ready because that same Holy Spirit that was there at the beginning of creation is here right now to help you to recreate a new life. When, where the Holy Spirit is acknowledged, he manifests his super, he manifests the supernatural power of God. Now I want you to get this. He said the Holy Spirit was there in verse 2. And this is all God is saying is, if you would just acknowledge I'm there, I will straighten out and fix your life. I know you know your problem's there. I know your loneliness is there. I know you know your failure's there. But do you realize that your answer is there too? Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. He said, if you'll just acknowledge me, I'm here. The same spirit that created everything is here right now hovering over you. And we also see here that the Holy Spirit was hovering over the surface of the water. Say it with me. He was hovering. Now, he wasn't levitating. He was, he was over it. He was getting as close as he could to the chaos and the mess and the emptiness and the death and the disorder. God, we see the Holy Spirit is not placed somewhere in infinity, someplace 
in some billion miles away, but he's right there on top as close as he can get to the problem because he's the solution. As cl- See, I'm always guessing. The Holy Spirit is as close right now as he can get with your permission. He goes, I'm, I'm close right now. I'm hovering. But that word hovering means this. It means to be moved with tender love, compassion, and great concern, to dwell and meditate on on with persistence, to brood over like a bird over its eggs, to cover warm, comfort, and protect. This is what what it's saying. The Holy Spirit is hovering over you, but he's hovering over you with love, not apathy, and not judgment. So he's hovering. He's hovering over the mess. He knows what you did before you got here, but he's still hovering. He knows that before you got here, you flipped off three people on the freeway. And you know, it doesn't stop him from hovering, like with your wayward hour sticker on the back. Hovering. He knows that you and your husband fought like cats and dogs before you came in here, and you're acting all holy right now, like, praise the Lord. And and there were two devils in that car, like, He knows that you came in here high, but he's still hovering. He's saying, I don't care what you do. I don't care how chaotic it is. I don't care how messed up you are. I'm still hovering. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to save you, save you, set you free, restore you. God is persistently thinking about you and how he could help you. He's deeply concerned. Your sin does not stop his hovering. He knows you're crazy. He knows that you watched porn last night. And you're ready. He knows that. He already knows all that. He's not, but I'm still hovering. I'm still hovering because I can't stop thinking about you because everything that I do is to have a relationship with you. And I know right now you're formless, you're empty, you're in a dark place, and I'm the only one that could create the life that you've been looking for. You're not going to find it in the money. You're not going to find it in the sex. You're not going to find it in the drug. You're not going to find it in your career. I'm the answer, and I'm hovering right now. If you'll just acknowledge me, I'll come in and transform your life. If I created the heavens and the earth right there hovering when there was nothing, then I could take your life and make it something really beautiful. Is there anybody here that's saying, I'll give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to change my life? It's up to you. You know what he's saying? I'm here, I'm near, and I'm close. I'm not far. Now, whether you allow him to come into your life, that's up to you. You can say, I don't, I don't, I don't want God. Well, then you continue being empty, without purpose, searching, confused, depressed, in misery, and the worst thing, headed for hell. It can't get any worse. Yes, it can. (laughs) And the truth is, some of us, God's been hovering, like you know he's been hovering around you for a really long time, but you're a hardhead. You got some hard knuckleheads. I mean, how low can you go, bro? I just did a Kanye West rap right there. I'm ready to go. How low can you go, bro? You need Jesus. You got to know it's time for you to give your life to Christ. He's the only one that can give you eternal life. Today's the day of your salvation. Did I forget to mention? <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's keep going. You guys are crazy. I gave you a little rap, little, little, little little bit there right there my next album will come out next week all right let's, let's get it all right hovering hovering he's hovering over you with love compassion and great concern the word surface hovering over the surface it means that he was hovering face to face let me Right now, I want you to understand the Holy Spirit is right in front of you face to face with his favor and his blessing ready to bestow or give you. 
what, you know what he's saying? You've come face to face with my love. You've come face to face with my good news. You've come face to face with my answer. You've come face to face with my grace. You've come face to face with my forgiveness. What are you going to do? Walk around him? You could. I think it'd be dumb. You say I'm dumb? I didn't say you're dumb. I said that'd be a dumb decision. <laughs> That means if life, eternal life, a new beginning, freedom, wholeness, completion, what healing, restoration was right in front of you, why would you walk around it? Receive it. It's the life you've been looking for. Is that right? And the last thing, the Holy Spirit's power was activated by the spoken word. And we see this that the Holy Spirit was hovering, but what caused the Holy Spirit actually to, to take action and create? It was the word. Say it with me. It was the word. He was waiting for an opportunity to act. And this is what happens. When the word is taught, the Holy and believes, it's taught and you believe it and receive it. It gives an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come into your life and activate his power. This atmosphere is greater than any atmosphere. I don't care if they're football games, playoff games, and baseball. Right now, there might be thousands of people, but an atmosphere where the word of God is being spoken is miracle territory. So God said it. And it happened. He spoke it. The spoken word and the power of the Holy Spirit always work together. Say it with me. The spoken word and the power of the Holy Spirit come to. If you want to see your life become powerful, let's, let's talk about it's a Christian has been a Christian for a long time. Anointed. You want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. This is what you need to do. Fill yourself with the word of God. How do we know you're full of the word of God? Because when you're full of the word of God, it overflows out of your mouth. Now, when the word of God overflows out of your mouth and you start declaring the word of God, you're activating the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit does nothing without the word. And the word does nothing without the Holy Spirit. That means when the word is spoken and declared, the Holy Spirit begins to act. The power to create was there, but until God said, let there be, there would not be. Your complaining does not produce the Holy Spirit. Talking about people does not produce a miracle in your life. Acknowledging all your problems and just confessing your problems without the solution doesn't fix it. What God is saying right now, if you want to be spiritual, you want to see the power of the Holy Spirit overflow in every area of your life, it's time for you to fill yourself with the word and then start speaking the word. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, and when you say what the Bible says about your sickness, about your family, about your mind, about your body, about your future, come on, when you start saying what the Bible says, the Holy Spirit begins to enforce what you say I love it look at this the word and the power of the Holy Spirit come together first Thessalonians 1 5 it says this for we brought the good news to you not with words only someone say not words only but also with the with power and the Holy Spirit where there's words there's what power it was through the spoken word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that the heavens and earth were created instantly. You know, a lot of people say that earth is billions of years old and stuff like that. But when God created everything, he created full grown. Remember what that is. God did not create Adam as a little baby. When Adam was created, he was instantly a mature, full-grown man. When there were trees in the garden, they already had rings of age on them because they were full-grown, mature trees. So when God created the universe, even though it was instant, he created it old. 
full, complete. And the science says, look, it had to take billions of years for that to happen. Yes, in a natural process. But not with God. Because God could do what takes billions of years. He could do it in a moment. Come on. What could take you your whole life, God could do in a second. Because we serve a God that can do anything he wants. Are you with me? Look how it describes creation. Isaiah 48, 13, it says this. My hands made the earth's foundation and spread the heavens out like, bam. After God said it, it it's just instantly happened. Look what it says. When I summon, so it said, when I what? Earth and sky, they come at once and present themselves. Earth, sky, boom, Holy Spirit brings it. The reason I want you to know that is because the same power that created the heavens and the earth when it was spoken is the same power that Jesus makes available to you to transform your life right now. Come on, someone's going to get set free from something that you couldn't overcome. You're trying to get past an obstacle, and God is saying, if you would just acknowledge me, I'll remove the obstacle. I'll set you free. I'll do what you couldn't do your whole life. I will do in a day if you'll just trust in my creative power. I make it available to you today. I love that. So when I, when I go into the hood, I'm bringing this power to transform lives. He did it for me. He can do it for you, homie. Look at this. God is bigger than his creation. He's greater than his creation. Look at this. Let's look at the galaxies he created in a moment. The, a typical galaxy contains billions of individual stars. And the sun is just one of them. One of the stars. Our galaxy, does anybody know where our galaxy is? Milky Way. It can, we don't think about this stuff, but it contains 200 billion stars. Not million, billion stars, our galaxy. The Hubble telescope, we're smart. I don't know how we did that. Has identified 125 billion galaxies in the universe, and they're just scratching the surface. 125 billion galaxies. Oh, that happened by accident, right? You leave Florida by itself, and I guarantee, I don't care how many billions of years we wait, it's still going to be rubble. You need a creative hand with supernatural power, come on, to turn anything around like this. The governor's got to get involved. There's 42,000 electricians down there right now restoring, re re restoring power over there. That means nothing's going to be rebuilt by itself. We know that's scientifically impossible. If, it, if no one touches it, it remains rubble. And this is a reality. If God does not, if you do not get a touch of the Holy Spirit in your life, your life be, stays ruined, stays depressed. Come on, we stay stuck. And God is saying that same power that created the galaxies is available to you right now. And that power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, recognize what's here. You better recognize. Now, the, our closest galaxy, Andromeda, that sounds like a galaxy right there, Andromeda. Galaxy is about 12 million trillion miles away. It, it will take 2.5 million years if we travel at the, lead of, at the speed of light to just get there. And I want you to get this. That's the closest galaxy. trying to define God they don't have a telescope that could go far enough to get to the end of God's creation because I want you to get this they're trying to get to the end of an infinite God and that God wants a relationship with you come on you gotta give praise for that come on and that power is available to you today this is what we're gonna do that power has come to you now that you came to him He's face to face with you, and he's looking. He's looking at the formlessness, the emptiness, the pain, the suffering, the abuse, the struggle, the hurt, not to judge you. I'm here to save you, make you whole, 
heal you, to set you free, to give you eternal life. Now understand this. Do not let your own reason stop you from receiving a miracle. Don't let laziness stop you from getting a miracle. Don't let procrastination stop you from getting a miracle. Don't let pride get in the way. Could it be that God's speaking to you right now and he's saying, I want you to make a decision. I'm here face to face with you. Are you going to turn your back on me and walk away? Or are you going to receive what I have for you? I want you, to have a, I want you to have a relationship with me. I'm face to face with your sin. I'm face to face with your failures. I'm face to face with the mess. I'm here. I'm here. I'm the creator of the universe. I can help you. I'll forgive you. I'll set you free. I'll give you a gift today of my Holy Spirit and eternal life. When you give your life to Jesus, this is a miracle. God no longer is hovering around you. He is now in you. You're a new person. <laughs> you notice that we're not giving you three rules to follow. Like, follow these rules and you'll go to heaven. Because I already know if I give you three rules, you'll break four of them. You'll make them another rule. You'll make uh, that one. I'll break that one too. If you try to get to heaven based on your own good works, you're not going to make it. You have to understand, he saves you. You can't save yourself. Salvation is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Freedom is a gift. Healing is a gift. God says, I'm just making myself available. Will you accept my word? I love it. I love the Holy Spirit. Right there. I'm going to count to three today. and I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. And when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand if you're saying, I want forgiveness of my sins. I want the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I know I'm a sinner. I've messed up. And I know I can't fix me. That's acknowledging the condition. The, whole, the word acknowledge the condition. But it also acknowledged the solution. You don't need to stay the same way or leave the same way you came in today. Give your depression to God. Give your failures to God. Give your addictions to God. We're all in the same boat. I hear people tell me all the time, man, I feel like you're speaking to me. And I'll tell you why I feel like you probably feel I'm speaking to you. Because when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to me. I mean, we're all the same, like, right? Some of us are really good at arguing and fighting. You win every argument, but you're lost. I'm the best arguer. Yeah, but you're arguing yourself right into hell. Come on, stop it. Receive Jesus. You're even arguing against the Holy Spirit right now. I don't know about that. Today's your day. Okay, I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I'm facing something that I can't overcome, but I need Jesus to help me. I realize I'm formless. I'm empty. I'm in a dark place. I want Jesus to save me. I want to live for Jesus. I'm tired of living for myself. Something has to change. I want to give God my problems, my life. I want him to save me. I want to make a decision today to follow Jesus, place my faith in Jesus. And if you believe in Jesus, you will not perish. If you believe in Jesus can have eternal life today a new life a new begin the holy spirit will come into your life and empower you to live a life you could never live you start where you're at you don't fix your life come to god it's not my mind no my power you come the way you are it's the spirit of god that does a miracle don't put it off for tomorrow today's your day if you take action you get breakthrough if you don't take action nothing will happen when i count to three say pastor that's me i want to be saved i want to I want to need a new start. I want to receive jesus and i want his holy spirit to live in me and transform me i want eternal life when i say three Raise your hand. One. Even if you think, I think that's me. Raise your hand. Be sure. Are you sure if you die today, you go to heaven? If you don't know, you're not going. Because you should know if you gave your life to Jesus or not. If you don't know, I don't know. Today's your day to know. Two. This opportunity might not have come again. This is your opportunity. I'm not trying to freak you out, but, you know, in Southern California, 230, 40,000 people die every single year. I mean, it happens. Tomorrow's I guarantee today's your day. The Holy Spirit's face to face. That's the judge to help you. When I say three, raise your hands. Oh, Bill, I want to give my life to Jesus. One, two, three. I want to give my life to Jesus. I need to recommit my life to Jesus. I want the Holy Spirit. I see the hand. I see the hand over there. I see the hand way in the back. See those hands in the back. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Anybody else? Come on. This is your day to receive. I see the hand. I see the hand. I, proud of you. Proud of you. I see the hand. I want those that, I want those that, Raise your hand to do me one more big favor. 
I want you to stand up right where you're at. This is what you're saying. I am standing up for Jesus right now. He stood up for you. Come on, if you raise your hand, stand up. Come on, come on, give him a hand. Come on, this is your brother. Come on, this could be your sister. This could be your dad. Come on, God is right now. God's going to set somebody free. If you have an addiction, come on, this is your day to get set free. The power that created the heavens and the earth is here. Come on, if you have an addiction, stand up right now. Let the Holy Spirit set you free. If you got massive depression, stand up. Get your breakthrough today. The Holy Spirit wants to set you free. This is your day. I want those that raise their hand. I want you to take one bold, bold step. I want you to come up here and give me the opportunity to pray with you. Come on, just come up. I want to pray with you. Come up, I want to pray with you. I'm gonna, we're going to pray with you. This is going to be your breakthrough. Come on, we're going to speak God's word over you. And the, mirror, the power of the Spirit of God that created the heavens and earth is going to give you a new life. Come on, church, let's give them a hand as they're coming up, giving their lives to Jesus. This is a miracle. This is the greatest miracle. Every miracle God does is for this moment that someone will believe and receive eternal life. Come on, church. Thank God that we have a church where the Spirit of God is moving because without the Holy Spirit, no one gets saved. Come on, no one gets set free. No one gets healed. Nothing changes. They're still coming. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. We're still celebrating. We're still thanking God. If you can celebrate someone else's breakthrough, your breakthrough will come next. Come on, let's all stand up with them right now. We're going to pray for them together as a church. Church, you guys are awesome. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit's moving right now, touching life? Okay. Give your life to Jesus. And if today you came and you have not made that decision yet, think about it. Because what you're procrastinating on is what you've been looking for. God loves you. You know what's locking, you know who's locking knocking at your door? Love. God's gonna heal right now someone's mind. Right now. So, someone, you've been even diagnosed with mental illness, but Jesus says this. I mean, the word of God says this: I'm not giving you a spirit of paranoia or fear. But I've given you power, Holy Spirit, love, and a sound mind. Someone's going to get healed from mental illness right now. You're going to get set free from depression right now. It's going to be your moment. I'm declaring it. Someone's going to get set free from an addiction that you not only have, but your mom had, your grandpa your grandma had it's been a generational curse on your life god's gonna heal you right now set you free from that addiction and you're gonna go back to your family and god is saying i'm gonna save you but it's gonna be a domino effect i'm gonna reach all of them come on is anybody receiving that word someone right now is gonna be healed from a sickness that you're totally scared of because it was a bad diagnosis but God says, I created the heavens and the earth. I have no problem healing you. And you're going to see, God's going to heal you. Not so you believe because you already believe. God's going to heal you so other people can believe. And he's going to use your testimony, come on, to help somebody else out. Is anybody ready to receive a healing right now? Someone's going to get set free from a tormenting spirit right now. What I mean by that is, is that at night, when you fall asleep, you get crazy dreams. They're actually just nightmares. And you know they're demonic because it's not anything you've ever thought of. And you're like hearing these things, seeing these things. It wakes you up in the middle of the night. You're startled. But I'm gonna right now, Jesus is going to set you free from a tormenting spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We're going to arrest the demon so it doesn't arrest you. Come on, let's believe that the Spirit of God is here to save, deliver, make whole. Someone here right now, God's going to restore your marriage right now. Yeah, but it's impossible. God says, not impossible for me. Why well, messed up too much? I know. But when they see the change in you, everything they've been looking for, they're going to find, well, you got it. And you know why? Because right now, God's going to restore you and make you the man that God created you to be. Come on. God's ready to do that now. 
Get ready. Tonight, after this moment, you're going to be able to rest. Someone's going to get set free right now from a spirit of poverty. What I mean by that is, is that it's just poverty, poverty, poverty. It's always fear of not having enough. And God is saying, I'm turning it around right now because I'm going to help you overcome the poverty so you can get some abundance to help other people out. I'm not just going to give you enough for you. I'm going to give you not just to survive. I'm going to help you have overflow like me. Come on. God said, just like me, I'm a God of overflow. I'm going to give you, supply your need according to my riches and glory. Understand, well, the reason I'm saying this is God wants the whole package for you. He really wants, of course, we're in a fight of faith. Fight of what? Belief. Are you ready to receive? When the word of God is spoken and people believe it, the Holy Spirit goes to work. Hovering the action. And today the Holy Spirit is right now ready to take an action. That's why you're here. Are you ready? Come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. This is how we connect with God. Bow your heads, everyone. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, I thank you for coming close to me today and meeting me face to face. Not looking at me to condemn me, to shake your head in disapproval, but to help me. You, you, you've been thinking about me when I haven't been thinking about you. Thank you, Lord, for being persistent and loving me so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for my sins, to suffer and resurrect from the dead, to pay the price for all the guilt and the wrong I've done. Today, I open my heart and I receive you, Jesus. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I'm done with my sin. I will follow you from this day forward. Fill me now with your power, with your freedom, with your peace. I am saved. I receive the free gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a new creation today. And from this day forward, I acknowledge that you're my Lord, you're my master, and I'm your disciple. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Fill it with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank you. God bless you guys. Wednesday night, you do not want to miss it. It's going to be powerful. Saturday, we're going to have a three to I mean, nine to three service is going to be crazy. If you need prayer, come up this way. We'd love to pray with you. Congratulations. I want to make sure we have more leaders up here. I need some help up here. I need at least another hundred altar workers. People are leaving the altar without help. I want to make sure we help everybody. Your next step here, we're going to pray with you and help you get baptized. Sign up for your next step in discipleship, and we'll get you connected with a small group. We love you. I'll be here for a few moments. Love you guys.